to be talking about set builder and interval notation. And before we talk about these notations, we have to talk about the set of real numbers and the notation for real numbers. Okay? Now, if you remember, the uh, symbol for real numbers is kind of that R with two lines on it. So we have to remember that symbol for later. Okay? And within real numbers, we have subsets. The first subset is rational and irrational. Okay. Now, irrational numbers are something like the value of pi, where the decimal goes on forever. It's never ending. And the square root of 10, it's never ending. 7.125 dot, 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 dot is never ending. So it's irrational. Okay. And now, rational numbers are what I look at is I look at ratio. And a ratio can be written as a fraction like three halves. So if it can be written as a fraction, it is a rational number. Now 1.6 can be written as a fraction, even though that that decimal repeats forever, since it can be written as a fraction, it is rational. One half is rational, negative 0.75 is rational, five is rational, because it can be written as five over one. And the symbol for that is a Q, with these two lines on the sides, okay? So that's your symbol for rational numbers. The next subset is integers, and integers are positive and negative whole numbers, including zero, like negative 12, 15, zero. And the symbol for integers is a Z with those thick two lines in the middle. Okay. The next is whole numbers. Whole numbers include zero and all positive numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And whole numbers is written like this. A W with the, the double lines on it. And the very last one is your natural numbers, which is just your counting numbers, not including zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's an N with the double lines in between. Okay, so we have to know our symbol for real numbers, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, and rational numbers. We will be using those later. All right, so let's talk about interval notation. Okay, interval notation is when we write inequalities. Okay, so if we, we have a less than or greater than symbol, you're used to seeing an open circle. Okay. Now, if you have an open circle in interval notation, you use parentheses. And you're going to see how this works once I graph it. Okay, if you have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you usually use a closed circle. And in interval notation, we use brackets. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this like you usually see, and then I'm going to graph it in interval notation. And then from the interval notation graph, I'm going to write the answer in interval notation. So let's graph it what, like you're usually used to see. So we have a negative 2 and a 3. And since we have the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, both of these are going to have closed circles. And since the x is in the middle, we're going to shade in the middle. Okay, so a closed circle shading in the middle. So I'm going to show you how this looks in interval notation. Okay, instead of closed circles, I'm going to use brackets. I'm going to point it in the direction that I shade. So both of them are closed, so both of them are brackets, and then we shade in between. Now the graph helps to write in interval notation. Because when we write in interval notation, we read from left to right. So I'm going to start in the very left, we see a bracket. So we do bracket, negative 2, comma, 3, close the bracket. And that is our answer in interval notation. All right, our next example is x is greater than 1. So I'm just going to do this in interval notation. So I have a negative 1. And since it's just greater than, it's going to be a parenthesis. And since we're shading to the right, we open it to the right. And the way we, we write this in interval notation, the first thing we come up on the left is a parenthesis, negative 1. And then it goes on forever to infinity, positive infinity. So we write infinity. And whenever we have an infinity symbol, we always use a parenthesis because there isn't an end to, to infinity. Okay, and I'm going to do a third example on here. 
so you can see it. I'm going to do it of an or. So let's say something like x is less than or equal to negative 2 or x is greater than 3. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, let's graph it in interval notation really quickly. We have a negative 2, we have a 3. Now it says x is less than or equal to negative 2. Since it's less than or equal to, I'm going to use a bracket and then shade to the left. And since it says x is greater than 3, I use a parentheses and shade to the right. So I'm going to use, read this from left to right. At the very left, it's going to negative infinity, so I'm going to start with negative infinity. So I'm going to do parentheses, because we always use parentheses with infinity. Negative infinity, comma, negative 2. And on the negative 2, it's a bracket. And then a u for union. And then I see a parentheses, 3, infinity, close parentheses. So that is your inter interval notation with all three types of inequalities. Okay. Next, we're going to look at set builder notation. Okay. Set builder notation, I break up into three different parts because it looks very unfamiliar and we use braces. Those little squiggly lines are called braces. Okay, and there's a certain way to read this. The first portion with the brace and the X is read as the set of all real numbers X. So that stands for the whole set of real numbers, what we learned at the very beginning. Okay, and then this line right here stands for such that. That's how I break it up. So this is right so far, the set of all real numbers such that, and then I'm going to give you a kind of a restriction, a rule. And the very last part is x is less than b, and that's written right there, okay? And that's just a different way of writing a set, of writing an inequality, of seeing a solution. Okay, so the first one says sketch the graph of each set of numbers. So number one says the set of all real numbers x such that x is greater than 2 and less than or equal to 5. It doesn't ask us to do it in interval notation so we can just do it in regular inequality notation. So if we take this, just graph this, we have 2, we have 5, we have an open circle on 2, closed circle on 5, and we shade in between. If we really wanted to, we could do interval notation, but we don't have to. It didn't ask us. Okay? The second one says the set of all real numbers x such that x is less than 0 or x is greater than 4. So we can graph that solution. So we have 0, we have 4 x is less than or equal to, so it's a closed. x is greater than, so it's open. And then we shade in opposite directions. So that's your set builder notation. So now what we can do is we can kind of move backwards from this and actually write in set builder notation from a solution from a sentence. Okay? So this one is writing in set builder notation. So you're going to write the set of numbers in set builder notation. So we're going to break this up into pieces. Number one says the set of all integers greater than 5. Okay, so we're always going to start off with the brace and then the x and then the line. Now we're going to write down the restriction or the rule that we have. Well, you always want to start off with the inequality. Okay, so we're going to start at the end. It says that our x has to be greater than 5. So we can write down x is greater than 5. It also has another rule for us. It has to be all integers. So we're going to say and. And then if we go back to the very beginning, the very first slide, we're going to look for our symbol for integers. So we go back, and our symbol for integers was a z. So we're going to use the z. And the way we write this, of how the set has all integers, we're going to do, you write e, x, and then this kind of curvy e, and then the symbol for integers, which is that z. And that is our solution for this. Okay? Our next one it's an interval notation, and I find it easier if we graph it first and then write it in set builder notation. It makes a little bit more sense. So let's write this graph. We're dealing with only negative 1. 
And since it's parentheses, we're going to use an open circle because a negative one isn't actually part of our answer. So we're going to put an open circle. And then it tells us we're going to shade to negative infinity and positive infinity. And if we take a look at this, our answer is everything but negative one. But an easier way of saying that is x cannot be negative one. And then all we have to do is put our braces and we've got it in set builder notation.